Yeah. 
Hi everyone, welcome to FCC Online Service. And right now, may I encourage you to open up your hearts. Let's prepare our hearts. Let's be encouraged to worship the Lord right now. Let's pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's worship our God. What a beautiful day that you have made our praise you. What a glorious day that you have made our praise you. Lord, our blessing, Lord, our blessing, King of things, my soul will sing to you. Come on, everybody sing. you. Let the praise ring. Ring from our homes, ring from our rooms, 
rain from the place that we are worshipping you right now. Hallelujah. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be lifted high. Jesus, we need more of you. Let your presence overflow this place. Bless our hearts. Minister to our hearts that when we sing, when we play, when we worship, when we serve you, we know that you are here right now with us. Hallelujah.
Thank you, Jesus. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be lifted high. Bless our times together when we are going to listen to your words. Bless our hearts. Warm our hearts. Minister to our hearts, spirit and soul. Hallelujah. Welcome back to SEC Online English Service. We are happy to see you here. And please leave a comment or, or a message down in the comment section uh, right there or the chat box so that we can interact and engage with one another. If you haven't been contacted by us yet, you haven't, uh, uh, you want to know more about us, uh, remember to click on the uh, contact link down there or you can just indicate us with a message down there. Remember to follow us on social media, our Facebook, our Instagram, and even our YouTube account. Uh, we also encourage you uh, that if there's any testimonies that you have, you would like to share with the whole church to encourage one another, uh, you can contact your cell leaders or uh, pastor team so that we can uh, arrange uh, and of course uh, uh, arrange with you and to prepare for your testimonies be read. Now, next we have uh, the NECF, uh, 40 days fast and prayer. Uh, we encourage you to join in this fast and prayer when we see this happening in the 7th of August to the 15th of September. So the booklet, the electronic booklet is now ready. Uh, it's now with your cell leaders or with pastor team. So if you want to have it, so we encourage you to contact a pastor team or your cell leaders to obtain it. Remember our Holy Communion uh, service is going to come up by the 14th and 15th uh, weekend of August. 14th and 15th of August weekend, we are having Holy Communion. So do be reminded to prepare your elements, your biscuit, your bread, uh, your wine or your fruit juice uh, to prepare for the Holy Communion as you come together as a body of Christ to partake together online. Now is a time of offering. If you have noticed, uh, I'm now sitting right beside of a fridge. And I encourage us sometimes that when we are thinking of what else to give thanks for, there's one thing that we should always be thankful for is the food on our table and also is the food in our fridge. So what do we have here in the fridge? Uh, there are plenty of food for me, so I'm also very thankful to God. You can also check your fridge. If there are plenty of food here, uh, then uh, maybe that add that on to your uh, gratitude towards God and to consider your own offering amount as well. If you have been giving faithfully, thank God for that. Please continue and may the thankfulness in your heart, heart ever increase. But if you don't have food inside here, don't worry, contact your cell leaders or contact pastor team so that the church will be able to help you from the welfare fund after uh, uh, seeing your whole condition. So we encourage you to still be involved with God's kingdom right now as God's kingdom is powerfully at work even at this time of pandemic, at this time of lack and uncertainty. So let us uh, give our offerings in cheerfulness. Let us say this prayer together. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for the reading of the Word of God. The scripture reading is taken from Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 7. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commanded. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. 
Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants, who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 6, verse 24 to 35. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed a seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The word of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestor ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Greetings to all of you in Faith Christian Center. I bring you greetings from Good Tidings Anglican Church, Tawau Sabah. It's truly an honor and also a joy for me today to share with you the Word of God. I will thank the leadership of the church and also Reverend Philip for giving me this opportunity. So let us pray as we begin and prepare our hearts to learn and receive the Word of God. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your love towards us. We thank you for your word. We pray that as we learn your word, your word will strengthen us. Your word will encourage us. Your word will guide us in our lives. Father, we pray for the Holy Spirit to grant us understanding and lead us as we learn your word. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we are truly living in uh, uncertain times and unpresented times and some say uh, we are living in a very confused times at this moment. But nonetheless, we are really grateful that we believe in God, we believe in Jesus and we have the Bible. And today we want to look at how should we live out our faith, that is to put faith in reality. And if you study the book of Romans, the book of Romans basically talks about our belief and our behaviour. How does our belief affect our behavior? I'm sure you have studied the book of Romans for the past few weeks. And if you look at the book of Romans, it's truly how Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome and to encourage them how to live out their faith. And especially in this chapter, uh, chapter 13, when we look at how do we live out our faith in the midst of being subject under authorities, rulers, and in today's context, we use the word government. Now, let me put things in perspective. I know a lot of us would have a lot of views towards government, towards whether it is our own government or even to compare with other nations' government. But today, I want us to bring us to the perspective from the Bible. What does the Bible say? I'm not here to give my personal view or neither we want to formulate our own personal view but we want to formulate a biblical view what does the bible says to us and how should we respond to our condition and our situation at this moment because there are times we have this tendency to read the bible in order to fit what we want to hear or fit our own perspective but 
let us do it this way where as we look at the word let the word shape and form our perspective towards our situation and that is how we would want to live out our faith and it's it's real whatever we go through today is real covid is real and all the things that we see around us is real so therefore how can we as believers of Jesus Christ rooted and grounded by the word of god which is the truth for all of us how can we live out our faith? faith now today we ask ourselves not only just what do we think but what does the bible says and how do we respond to the bible now, now let's read in romans chapter 13 verse 1 it says let everyone be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authorities except that which god has established the authorities that exist have been established by god now this is a connection between romans 12 and 13 Romans chapter 12 talks about no Christians as the end in that chapter is remind us as believers we should not seek vengeance and it is also talk about how do we live our lives as a pleasing sacrifice offering to God so here in chapter 13 many times we look at this chapter as a chapter for us to learn how do we submit to our authorities but let us look at the context and look at these few verses here as to start off as we look at how do we respond but let's see the bible here says let everyone be subject to governing authorities they mean everyone all of us you and i we are subject to governing authorities for there is no authority except that which god has established that means god has established the governing authorities i know we may have our own thoughts that say that hey we are in a democratic country we do our votes we cast our votes and some leaders in the authorities take things in their own hands but is that still considered god um god established well we need to understand one thing that is the sovereignty of god Men may take things into their own hands but at the end of the day god is sovereign god knows and god sees it now there is no authorities there's the authorities that exist that are established by god here was the scriptures and then it continues and paul says here that every authority is to be submitted to willingly now we must understand when paul wrote this letter it was during the time of the roman empire ruling and in those days there were no democracies and there are no particular special treatment for christians if you look at church history so now we see that the believers in rome also face very difficulties how do they submit but here paul is writing to them paul saw the legitimate authority of the government there at during that time so for us today it is also to see that whichever country we are in regardless whether we are in malaysia whether we are in other countries as long we are in a country there is a government we are subject to the governing authorities now verse 2 give us another setting here he says consequently whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what god has instituted and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves now since government have authority from god they are bound to obey them unless they order us to do something that's contradictory to the law of god with the truth of god therefore here it reminds us whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what god has instituted now let's put things here as a basis before we move on that know that the governing authorities is god instituted and whoever rebel means we are rebelling against what god has instituted it's not so much as rebelling against that government but it's rebelling against what god has instituted now this is where we want to look at so as believers today as followers of jesus christ disciples of jesus christ how should we live out our faith in this reality world we know we there are circumstances situations we are not happy about and there are guidelines there are sops there are many things that you found that it doesn't make sense you think perhaps they should do this and they should have do that but bear in mind there are appropriate channels and appropriate platforms that we could do so but for us today as believers what should we do how should we respond 
in faith in the truth that God has given to us. So I want to share with us three things because there are many times we choose who we want to obey. Even in social media, we choose who one we want to follow. We can follow just by a click and we can unfollow by just another click. So obedience is a command, though we may say it's a choice. But once we commit ourselves to follow Jesus, we are to obey. You know, it's like in the military. The military, you know, if you are in the, in the military, the soldier, the commander will tell the soldier that this is an order. That phrase supersedes everything and the soldiers have to follow. So then all for us as soldiers of Jesus Christ as well, how do we follow the commands of our commander? Three things, what should we do? Firstly, do good. In Romans chapter 13, verse 3 to 4, it says, For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servant, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Now, we just look at how Paul described the description of what does the government do. The government is to punish and to deter evildoers. Paul's idea here is that believers at that time should be the best citizens of all, to be law-abiding citizens, to follow the law, to do good. So because he says, he asks, do you want, want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Right? Sometimes we are fearful. I remember when we are growing up, uh, perhaps parents may used to tell us, you better be a good boy or else the police will come and catch you. you know, the sense of using uh, the police, uh, the authority to, to remind us we better behave before we are caught. Now, it's almost a similar thing that Paul is using here. He says, then do what is right and you will be commended. If there are SOPs for us to follow, we follow. Sometimes we say, I have why we are being punished. Because if we uh, breach the, uh, the, the SOPs, we don't follow and then we are punished, then it's the consequences of our decision of breaking the SOP. So this is very straightforward. And there are times we tend to give our own reason and excuse. Now, many times people may say that I, I'm confused. I don't understand the SOP. So when we are fine or when we are... Um, punish, uh, so we give source a lot of reasons. But deep inside in your heart, your conscience, you know, actually it should not be done, but you should still do it. Unless it's a genuineness, and you're not very genuine, that we are not very sure and not very clear. But times that we have this inside our heart here, we want to do it even though we know it is wrong. So here, looking at this will encourage us, hey, we, as we are subject to government authorities, we need to do good. And Paul says, for the one authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear swords for no reasons. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment for the wrongdoer. That, that's the purpose. No matter how we look at it, no matter how we see things that may not be fair or not just, but it is not for us to critique and to, to say and to, to, to rebel against it. Remember? Oh, we have our own views. It's not wrong. We have the right to share, you know, say our views and all that. But be mindful. We are ambassadors of Christ. How do we bring that life out in today's world as ambassadors of Christ? Unless God has put you in a position where you are in the political under arena and that you have a platform to do what you need to do to bring about improvements or even change. But then, looking at here, we need to see that we are reminded to do good. In other words, be law-abiding citizens. I know there are times are not easy, but obedience is not easy. It requires us to have humility and a heart of submission to not just what the governing authorities are saying, but to look at what the Bible is teaching us and what the Bible is teaching teaching us to do, how to live out our faith in the reality. Now, second, not just to do good, but to submit. Romans chapter 13, verse 5, it says, 
Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of the possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Now, we must be subject to the government, not only because we fear punishment, or perhaps sometimes we are not fearful of the punishment, but then here, not because we are fearful of the punishment, but because we know it's the right thing to do before God. For conscience sake, when, the, when Paul talks about for conscience sake here, it's more on the, uh, the, the conscience, the, the discernment of knowing what is right, what is wrong. And it is we obey with our conscience wide open. We don't just submit blindly, but we have that conscience guided by the truth of God to know what is right. No, Christians, we, our obedience is not blind. Our obedience is based on the truth of God. Peter say the same thing, very similar to what Paul says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor as the supreme authority. Peter also say the same thing, we should be good citizens. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake. For God is not just for us or just to please anybody, but it's for God. That is how we used to say, when we say we live for God, so when we submit to the authorities, we are doing it for the Lord's sake, for the matter of conscience. And that conscience is guided by the truth of God, not by our emotions, not by other any informations that could form our thoughts. Yes, that is important as well, but deep inside is the root, which is the truth of God that will help us to submit. So because of Jesus, we submit to authority. Now, it is not something that it is done very easily because we tend to have the question to ask, what if, the whole question of what if our authorities are not doing the things that they should be doing? What if our authorities are breaking the law? Or what if this and that? But the question, again, we have to answer. Yes, we have a lot of what ifs, which is good. But let us answer the what ifs through the Bible. What if the Lord say this? What does the Lord say? Not just what if the authority is done, but what if we do it based on what the Bible says? Now, understand this as the Bible is written as like a love letter to us to guide us in our lives. There are this tendency, we use it as a ruler to measure others instead of measuring ourselves. So the psalmist often remind us as we read the psalms is to search our hearts, to search our hearts, to reflect upon our lives. So in, in this context, as we learn to submit to the authorities, Paul said, it is necessary. So my brothers and sisters, it is necessary, something for us to do as a matter of conscience and for the Lord's sake. Now, not only that we do good, we submit. The third thing is that pray. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 to 3 says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleasing, pleases God our Saviour. Now, we see that here Paul wrote to encourage Timothy as a young uh, leader or a pastor at that time in, in a church. It's, it's almost written almost the same time under the, the rule of the Roman Empire. Again, Paul encouraged the priority, the importance here. You see, when Paul said, I urge you then, first of all, it has, does not refer to any time, but it refers to importance. First of all, that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. We should be praying for all people. And then Paul says, for kings and all those in authority. 
so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. So Paul is extending and encouraging them in the public worship of believers. Now Paul begin with this. Okay, if we read First Timothy chapter two, is talking about a guidelines of public worship. But first and foremost, Paul say, pray for all people, pray for the kings, pray for those in authority. Now here. Is a reminder for us. First of all, we have to pray for them. How much time, or how uh, how do we put our authority, our priority to pray for government? Do we criticize more than we pray? Do we judge them more than we pray for them? Now, I, I must admit, and in my early days of, of ministry, I'm a very critical person. Now, sometimes we are trained, whether by by our 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 education, by our upbringing, we are trained very critically. We have to th- yes, critical thinking is good, right? To think critically, but there are times I begin to think to myself, am, am I being critical or very judgmental? No, it's sometimes we feel that it's very thin line. It's the same. It's the same. But then I remember one time as I was reflecting once again at a certain point of my time, no. And the Lord reminded me. The Lord corrected me that I should be praying more for my government instead of criticizing, because I'm not in the position to do so unless I'm being put into a position. The closest I could get was really visiting a uh, uh, parliament, you know, uh, in in Slango at that time, you know, meeting Hena Yo uh, from close end, you know, just to ask one or two questions. That's the closest I could get uh, at that time, you no know, being in that position. But other than that, I think my role as what the Bible reminded me would be to pray. So my brothers and sisters and friends, the Bible reminds us to pray for them. Have we pray for them? Yes, some may say, I pray, I pray so long, I pray, I pray, I pray. But then things turn out to be good. Yes, hallelujah. And then when things turn out not to be good, oh, we start praying again. You know, friends, Praying for government should be an ongoing thing. Don't pray just because now there is a difficulty. Don't pray just because it's the month of Madeka, the month of independence, but pray at all times. Because Paul says, I urge you then, first of all, this is utmost important. Pray for them at all times, regardless of how our government is doing right now. Pray for them at all times, and this is something what we do as a church back here. You know, despite the pandemic, we 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 do not we are, yes we are affected in many many ways. But one of the things that we keep on doing, you no, know, we still have our Monday prayer uh, prayer meetings. You no, know? today maybe we don't call it a prayer meeting. We don't meet together physically, but we do sh- keep our prayer ongoing every Monday at least as a church. No, we share, we give a, a short reflection and then we spend some time and encourage members wherever they are to pray. And at all times in that prayer gathering, in prayer meeting, we make sure we put in to pray for our town, for our state and for our nation. So we want to make sure we as a church do our part to pray for all those in authority. In government, why the Bible says here, this is good and pleases God our Savior. If we ask what pleases God, pray for all people, for kings and for those in authorities. This is what pleases God. Please, doing things that pleases God, it doesn't mean that we have to be always upfront, upstage, you know, outwardly. But doing what is pleases God is basically obeying. The scriptures, following what the Lord is trying to tell us, and following what the Lord says in scriptures. No, it's like in those days. If you read the Bible in the Old Testament, even no, it was not easy for them to submit to kings and you know authorities who are bad kings and not good kings. But yet, we see God intervene in those times. Rest assured, our God is sovereign. We don't try to replace God by being sovereign ourselves. So therefore, I want to encourage us to live out our faith. How to live out our faith in these realities? Go back to the scriptures. What the Lord is saying, and what should we do based on scripture? 
not based on our emotions and our mindset. Those is important as it not help us to live our life, but let scriptures be the basis, the root of formulating even what we think, how we do, and what we say. Now, I want to encourage you as we look back even in the book of Romans. I bring back us as I, as I close. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. This is one of the key verses in the book of Romans. It says the gospel, in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed. God revealed his righteousness in the gospel. When we respond to the gospel, becoming disciples of Jesus Christ, God's righteousness is revealed to us for us to be imitators. And therefore, Paul says, the imitators of Christ. And therefore, that righteousness is by faith from first to last. And that is the substance and that is the key for us to live in this reality world by faith because the righteous live by faith. And our faith is the foundation and our basis and our trust for us to face the reality of this world. We are to live out our faith in this world. Faith in all circumstances, and in all situations. And this faith we have is an unshakable faith. And whatever challenges that we may go through, if we stay with our faith, having the Word of God as our foundation, we rise up stronger in faith. And our faith is so strong and is so real, it will help us to face the reality of this world. So, I want to encourage all of us here today that faith in reality means faith in action. What should we do? Do good, submit, and pray. So I pray that all of us will continue to be salt and light in carrying out in obedience to the Word of God. How should we respond to our authorities, not just on the government, but whether even in your workplace, you are under certain authority, a certain uh, management leader, whichever it is, we want to pray that we learn from what the scriptures has reminded us so that we will live out our faith in this real world. Let us pray. Father, I want to thank you for your love for all of us that you love us and you are such a great God. Father, we give you thanks. We pray that you will be with us and we pray that God, you continue to guide us as we learn to submit the rulers that we are subjected to for your sake and for conscience, Lord. May Lord, you lead us. May Lord, you guide us and help us, Lord, so that we, as we submit and obey in the word of God, we live out our faith so that we continue to be the salt and light wherever God you have placed us, wherever God you have put us. Lord, we want to give you thanks and we want to give you praise because you are our loving God. You are a wonderful God. Lord, truly, we know that you love all of us and we pray that, Lord, you help us to live by faith so that as we display and portray your righteousness in this world, we pray that many will also see this love of God, will also see this good news of God living out in our lives. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. And this we pray in Jesus' name. So may God bless all of you as you continue to live out your life, live out your faith in this real world. God bless all of you.
Church, let's reaffirm our faith by saying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and all things seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, one in being with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, He was crucified under Porter's Pilate. He suffered, died and was buried. On the third day, He rose again in fulfilment of the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So meanwhile, as we live our life, let's continue to live our life and honour the Lord. Let's receive the blessing from the Lord as we open our hearts, as we open our life to let God be part of our life. Bless us. So church, the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Church, let's go in peace and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. And have a good time. I'ma be up in here having some god time, and you're good on the genuine. Like illumination, illumination. You light up my life like you lit up creation. Won't let me drown, you my flotation. Won't let me thirst, cause you my hydration. So I'ma do my dance in your arms. This love is gonna last in your arms. You're everything to me, everything I need, everything I wanna be, JC. You got me like, Hi everyone, do you know that we have our own YouTube channel? Ooh. The name is I Love FCC. Yes, please subscribe and do subscribe and like. There's a like button, just click, click and subscribe, click, click and on the bell ring click, click, for <laughs> notifications. See you next time. Yay!